giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. I think we have a couple more questions actually, so let's hit those up real quick first. Sorry, I didn't see those. Uh, Dar, Dare, uh, sorry, I don't know how to say it. Uh, how do you all recommend going about scouting? What's the best way to get more involvement in it? So I know you guys kind of talked about what you do for scouting, but maybe you guys can talk about how you get kids excited to do it, you know, what, how you guys get participation in that. Uh, so Jishnu, I think you should talk about that because you've scouted before. All right. Uh, I <laughs> honestly didn't really like it that much, but it is an essential thing that we do. So we, we try to hype it up for kids. Um, uh, scouting is the, basically the reason why we are where we are right now. It's how we choose our alliances. It's how we win competitions. So if kids know that they're doing something that's going to let us win, help us win, take us to the winning a regional or championships, then they get pretty motivated and traveling with the team is always a privilege and people know that. So it's kind of like the ultimate goal as being on 1670 is to travel with us and scout with us. And yeah. And follow up on scouting from Yamo221. How do you upload the data to a server since hotspots are banned at competitions? How do you guys manage your, your data consumption on the back end? So what we used to do was we had these Bluetooth hotspots that would fail all the time. And it was basically a nightmare. So we ended up switching to a QR code system about halfway through uh, build season. So basically, the, all the scouting data that a tablet collects uh, goes saved to a QR code. and then the QR code is scanned periodically throughout the map, uh, throughout the competition. And once uh, the matches come to a pause or something, then the scout per, uh, lead person who has a laptop scans the QR code with his phone and then uses his data plan to update, uh, upload all the data to the server. All right, uh, moving on to a question from rye 24 gaming uh, question is the driver station has a second screen mounted at eye level. Is this a major advantage to have the screen mounted there or does this block the driver's vision? How could teams implement a system, a similar system on their own driver station? I think we lost Jishnu. I'll, I'll mention, I'll uh, answer this question really quick. Uh, major advantage. It definitely is not a major advantage. It is a minor advantage, but I would say a lot of the things that we do on 1678 are in attempts to get minor advantages because when you're trying to play at a world championship level, it's about trying to squeeze out every last bit of performance that you can. Um, having the screen at eye level is great for the driver because they don't have to look down to see any additional information. So that screen is on a pole, and I think we might publish our drive uh, driver station CAD a little bit later um, in this off season, but um, the, the goal is to get the, uh, the heads up display right next to where the driver is looking out at the field so they can glance over at the screen and they can see things like what the intake sees on the robot. Um, and that provides just that split second of advantage of having to look down versus looking over at the um, heads up display uh, screen that's posted on that pole. I would not classify it as a major advantage though. Our major, major advantages come from our build season schedule and other disciplines that we have. Uh, the screen is simply a minor thing that we are trying to get a little bit of an edge. All right. Uh, I think it's IC910 is asking, in 2019, does 1678 plan on using field relative positioning through nonlinear state estimation? Uh, uh, Wait, I wish can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Answer yeah, I think I think my webcam just broke or something. So I guess, <laughs> should I keep talking? Yeah. Yes. Did you want to answer that question? <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't think anyone else can. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are using field relative positioning. Uh, well, it's just a fancy word for kinematics. So yeah, uh, we are going to keep a live X, Y position of the robot throughout the match uh, using gyro and encoders and that's about it. Yeah. All right. Sounds like you guys are ready to recruit some mentors. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, next question comes from Schreiber MR. Can you discuss a little bit about the communication that goes on between you and other top California teams during the season? How much do you share with each other during build season and how openly do you communicate? For example, like last year's 1323 intake uh, is an example of that. Uh, so I'll, I'll share on this. So, um, you know, a lot of us in California have been doing this for a long time. However, um, I will say that um, as much as we've been doing this for a long time, and a lot of us on 
a lot of these teams are really good friends. Uh, the amount of sharing that happens is very minimal. Um, uh, the, the intake uh, situation was a last ditch effort uh, in order to try to save a little bit of our competitive edge. And um, 1323 has been a really uh, strong partner of ours at events for the last couple of years. And so uh, we had gone back and forth on that. Um, but for the most part, uh, the sharing is actually very, very minimal. A lot of times the first time I'm seeing a lot of these teams robots is when we do a practice session at 254 shop the weekend before stop build. So it's a little day, it's a few days before 254 does their picture reveal to the rest of the community, but, uh, not by much. So I'd say the sharing is very, very minimal, even though our teams, especially because a lot of these teams are also the ones that are hosting all of the off-season events in Northern California. Um, but uh, the amount of sharing that happens in season is still pretty minimal. All right. Uh, another question. This one's coming from Ride24 Gaming. Uh, Mike, in your strategic design video, you repeated the quote, steal the best, steal from the best, invent the rest. Uh, do you ever feel that you steal too much and invent too little? <laughs> That's a really great question, actually. I think it's a very fair question. I would say we're stealing too much and inventing too little when the results don't work out the way we want them to. Uh, if the results still end up how our, what our uh, lining up with what our team goals are, we'll continue to have this uh, operation of steal from the best and then the rest. I think it's only when that stops working uh, when we need to start rethinking, uh, do we need to be innovating more in-house rather than stealing from methods uh, that are outsourced from other teams and other programs. Um, but that hasn't happened yet, so I don't think we're doing it too much. All right. Uh, Coops37 asks, is there any information out in the open on your pit? Plans, drawings, lots of pictures, guides, et cetera. Ooh, this is a great question. And this is something that is a little bit of a pet project of mine. We developed our super pit a couple of years ago with an ambitious student and their parent that created the road case. The parent was actually a roadie for bands like U2 and some of the other big bands, and they designed the road case from scratch. We have the drawings and we have the CAD and we are planning a release, but it has not been wrapped up yet. So it's going to come in the next couple of months. It's a little bit later than I was hoping it would be, but we are going to release a CAD of where our pit setup is right now. Um, and what we're planning on using for the 2019 season, in addition to the paper drawings that we sent to the road case manufacturer. So we are going to publish those. It just hasn't happened quite yet. I'm hoping it can get together in the next month or so before build season. Very cool. I think we'll all look forward to that. And uh, I think we've got one more question left. Um, Apim, uh, A-P-H-I-M-M, -M, asks... Uh, Mike, which year did 1678 have the best driver operator synergy and what made it <laughs> I know who this kid is. This punk kid was our driver for two years. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I felt like it was a loaded question. So that's why I, oh, I, that's why I waited until the end to ask it. But. I, I gotta, okay. I gotta pick the kid that won the world championship in 2015. That's fair. Uh, Takumi with, uh, Kelly Ostrom. Uh, they won us a championship. There, it's really hard to beat that. Uh, they also went undefeated with 10 and 0 record in the finals. Um, so sorry, Avery, but uh, <laughs> no championship. Ooh, wow. I just got a text from, from one of our mentors who was our first uh, driver that won a blue banner in 2011 saying you should pick 2011, but certainly not <laughs> that year. Uh, I think it has to go to 2015. Cold blooded. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.